Hello, welcome to Biology Recap. Um, and what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be going through episodes one to three. Um, obviously, I've already done certain amounts. So here I'm going to go through what I've spoken about. Um, and in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to speak about what well, I spoke about the episodes one and two first. And then with three, I'm going to do something a little more, which is I'm going to get some um, public domain images and to accompany the descriptions of the um, organelles I'm going to describe. Okay, so the first thing that um, I did, we started off um, episode one, is I spoke about prokaryotic cells. They're single celled, um, for example, bacteria. They've got no nucleus. Um, and then I spoke about eukaryotic cells, uh, multi celled um and for example, got animal and plant cells, they've got a nucleus. So I was just trying to make the distinction between prokaryotic having no nucleus and eukaryotic having a nucleus. So then I spoke about the cell um, cell structure and ultrastructure. So the ultrastructure is the collection of organelles uh, and that can be viewed under an electron microscope. And that's the reason I've decided to actually use images. I could have done this without any images, but it seems like it's gonna be a good idea to use images. Um, and hopefully I'm just gonna try and use, some will be um, illustrations, some will actually be um, Micro, uh, microscope um, images so yeah so so all these sort of cells um at the moment are eukaryotic cells looking at about um two to 200 micrometers um so that's about 0.002 to 0.2 millimeters so these are fairly fairly big uh, cells um certainly bigger than anything in um uh yeah it's bigger than most stuff really so anyway so we're oversimplified here is because um yeah, because obviously it's, it's quite complex. You need to understand all the different operations of all the different organelles, which is a very complicated topic. Um, but at the same time, um, um, at this uh, generic level, in this very beginning, early stage, I also want to say that plant cells have got more organelles than animal cells. They've got the same organelles as animal cells and a few more besides. So, yeah, um, all multicellular organisms are eukaryotes. So, yeah, so that's kind of, yeah, eukaryotes. Okay, so yeah, um, then the next thing that we're going to talk about, um, so basically what happened was, is I, I, I spoke about this, um, and then I'd said, and then in the first one I did animal cells, and the second one I did plant cells, I drew an uh, illustration, so I'm just going to review that very briefly here. So the first time I went animal cells, and we said, as we approach them outside, we go through the plasma, so that's the um, cell surface membrane, so that's like the, um, you know, it's the... Um, yeah, so yeah, so the large structure inside is, is the nucleus. So there's a big nucleus inside, um, and the nucleus um, is obviously a lot of empty space, a lot of, it's a lot of C, like any any kind of nucleus. Um, well, mm, well, not empty space, but it's basically just a, a big thing in the middle. Um, but I, like I say, I'm gonna have to just use the descriptions more later on. So at the moment, it's just a big thing in the middle. Um, it's got the nucleus inside, which is a smaller thing. Um, and it's also surrounded by the nuclear envelope. So you've got the nucleus with the nucleus inside, all surrounded by the nuclear um, envelope, with this it's sort of like sort of wing type stuff going on on the envelope. So yeah, so outside the nucleus, you've got a sea of cytoplasm. Yeah, so the cytoplasm is all outside the nucleus there, um, and then um, there's many, many more organelles um, in the, in this cytoplasm. So you've got the Golgi apparatus. Um, which is a large structure, quite large, uh, relatively large structure. Uh, there's also a smooth endoplasmic reticulum and the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And I think I may have found my final spelling mistake because that is it. There's also round ly lysosomes, small ribosomes, and globular mitochondria. And I tried to illustrate this in the, in the uh, image, in the pictures I drew. And yeah, so plant cells also have got all these organelles, like I've mentioned. Uh, there are also more organelles. Um, so. So basically, plant cells transport sap. So yeah, so sap, that's not something which is not going on in animal cells, because animals are obviously not trees. Um, well, I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm sure later on, I'll, I'll work out that they actually are, but you know, <laughs> whatever, anyway. So so a new organelle, a vacuole, looks a bit like a boot, or a big, big, big structure, I'm gonna have to look at that more. And obviously, all these things are gonna be vary between different cells. So they're not, it's not gonna be, uh, it's not gonna be complete similarity, um, which is, um, so it contains sap, which is essentially a collection of minerals and nutrients. Uh, other new organelles, the chloroplast, talk about that in a moment. Um, and yeah, so and there's a cell wall and plasma dismata, which are holes in the cells as traps so for trap. Tra I don't know, that was cross between trap and a crab. But um, sap transport to neighboring cells. So yeah, so that's the first two episodes um, that I spoke about. Now the third episode, I spoke about a few um, extra um a few, a few of these organelles that I've just mentioned. So we're going to go into there accompanied by the pictures. 
Okay, so yeah, um, so here we have the um, plasma membrane, um, also known as the cell service membrane, I've mentioned. And what I spoke about, this is now we're going to start what I went through in biology three. Um, so it's found on the surface of animal cells and just inside the cell wall of plant cells. And I did actually put eukaryotic cells, um, but I actually meant prokaryotic cells. So yeah, so it's uh, inside the cell wall of plant cells and uh, of um, and prokaryotic cells as well. And as you can see, anyway, this picture is quite is a is a very good uh, illustration of that. Um, you can see that basically what it does. It's made of lipids and proteins. You can see that there's uh, the proteins are labelled there. Um, the outside of the cell is the top, um, um, with the in you know the cell being um, denoted by writing the cytoplasm in there. Obviously, it's not including the other organelles. But it's just to show the. Um, and the left hand side is quite cool. You can see the uh, nucleus, which we'll of course speak about in a moment. Um, and you can see that this is a small uh, part of it. And you can see that, yeah, I mean, and the function of it is to regulate the movement of substances into and out. Okay, so the next one is is um, is the uh, this one, the cell wall. So yeah, as you can see, as you can see, it doesn't want to stop. But anyway, um, hmm. All right. So anyway, as you can see, basically, the, the cell wall is um, it's a rigid structure that um, um, surrounds plant cells, right? And it's mainly made out of cellulose. So if you look at the middle section here, we can see the primary cell wall. The other stuff is a bit more complicated, but um, yeah. So you can see this is all cellulose. It's made up of this cellulose. Um, um, cellulose in here, which is obviously a rigid structure. You can see by the, the the cross. Often when you get patterns like this that are very um, inter interlaced, um, it's that's a very strong. Um, this is like a defensive structure, and it supports the plant cells. So yeah, so we've got the um, plasma membrane and the cell wall we spoke about, and the other two we spoke about the nucleus and the lysosome. So let's do. Okay, so the next thing I spoke about is the nucleus. So what I'm going to do actually, um, even though it's obviously much better in full screen. I'm going to have to work out how, how I'm going to actually do that without, um, I think, I think I know how I'm going to do that, but I'm not going to do, it. I'm not going to do it for this one, but, um, next time I do a review, it's going to, I'm going to do it in a, um, in full screen and it'll look better. Probably look better each time as I learn more things. So anyway, the nucleus, right? So this is, as you can see, this pic, this is a really, this is a really great picture actually. Um, <clears throat> um, you can see, I haven't, I haven't, there's actually a cell picture, which I'm going to, I'm going to talk about the other, um, organelles, um, uh, momentarily and in the um, episode eight as well so anyway the new um so the nucleus which it's um this is the membrane it's taken it's taken it out and expanded the size from the regular cell so um so you can see it's um it's yeah it hasn't actually got the um the the um nuclear em envelope but it does have other uh, elements um um but yeah you can see it's a it's a, a membrane oh, Sorry, what am I talking about? It's calling it the membrane, isn't it? Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the thing, because I suppose I haven't seen it in 3D. I'm going to have to also, what I may do is, um, I want to try and get find some public domain image, actual real images of stuff. Um, at this stage, it is good to look at it like this, but perhaps when I've done, it's gone through all the organelles at the end, I'll do that. Um, so you've got a nuclear membrane. I believe that's referring to the... Um, uh, um, No, it's not actually. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, because this, this is where two-dimensional pitch and a three-dimensional are different. But we know that it's got a nuclear envelope, which is a double membrane, which contains pores. And that could be the pores in the membrane. That, but then it says nuclear pore, and it has those little dots there. So I'm just thinking how the membrane actually looks. And how does the membrane look? Oh, that's the thing. Yeah, I need... Yeah, I mean, it should really... Really, what I expect to see is like, a, uh, you know, basically a, a big you know, a big shape with gaps in it for the pores. And then you've got the nucleus in the middle. The chromatin... Um, uh, yeah, and the chromatin is, is, is the little dots. Um, but funny enough, it's looking like the, it looks like the pores of the dots here, and the chromatin and the, and the little wavy lines. Um, 
Hmm. Chromatin is made from proteins and DNA. Uh, DNA controls the cell's activity. So I know, I mean, yeah. So the pores allow substances to move between the nucleus and the cytoplasm. Yeah. So the chromatin is, and to be honest, it looks, yeah. Hmm. So I guess the chromatin is like strands of like strands of DNA, and that's why it's sort of got that sort of strandy sort of. Okay, so here we are with the final one. We can talk about lysosomes. Um, and you can see, um, as they, as obviously it's, it's um, yeah, basically large, you know, large green, um, yeah, around, large round, around organelles surrounded by membrane, um, no clear internal structure. Um, and yeah, they contain, contain digestive enzymes, um, kept separate from the cytoplasm and can be used to digest invading cells um, or to break down worn out components of the cell. So they, they, hmm. So they're actually for digestion, the lysosomes, um, and they've got they've got a membrane of their own as well. Uh, a lot of these things have got membranes from the looks of it. But then I guess yeah, I mean I guess I guess they wouldn't. I mean hmm, yeah they wouldn't just they wouldn't just stay there unless they had a membrane I suppose. But I mean there are probably some things that actually would, but it doesn't matter. Um, so they're kept separate from the cytoplasm by a surrounding membrane. So they, they, they digest invading cells or break down worn out components of the cell. So, yeah, so they're very, very much um, sort of like a renewal thing. Anyway, that's going to be it for Biology 4. Um, for uh, 5, 6 and 7, I'm going to be, is going to be back to what I was doing um, before. I'm going to go through um, 